Hey guys, welcome to part five. And in this video, we're going to take a look at lighting. So first of all, I'm going to remove the existing light from my scene and then hide the plane. Press Shift A to add a new light and select point light. We can now press G and Z to move this up along the Z axis. And we'll need to switch over to the rendered view to see the lighting in action. Now to adjust the properties for the selected light, we will need to select the light tab and we can increase the power of the light, thus increasing the brightness. We can also adjust the radius of the light source, making it larger or smaller. And we can also click the color picker and give the light a color. And if we click the eye icon for our plane, we can see how this light affects the entire scene. Now this is a point light, which emits light in all directions. We can also change this to a sunlight or a spotlight. And by clicking and dragging on that yellow point, I can point this in any direction. We can also change this to an area light, which essentially creates a surface and emits light in a particular direction. So let's switch back to point light and then move this around and see how the shadows and the lighting are affected in the scene. Now, another way we can light our scene is with an environment light or an HDRI. And essentially this is an image that wraps around the entire scene acting as a light source. So if we go to the world tab and click on the yellow dot for color, we can add an environment texture and then click open. And you can see I have a folder for my HDRIs and these are all free from HDRI Haven. And now you can see the scene is lit with this HDRI, but the actual image is in our scene and we don't necessarily want that. So first from the world tab, what we can do is we can adjust the strength of the light. So I could bring this down if it's a bit too bright or I can increase it beyond the default value of one. And then from the render properties tab, I can go down to film and check transparent. This will give me the lighting from the HDRI, but the actual image itself will not be visible in the scene. Also from the render properties tab, you can see we're using the EV renderer by default. We can increase the render value for a higher quality output. And we can also enable things like ambient occlusion, bloom or screen space reflections. Another render engine we can use is Cycles. And if you have a decent GPU, it's a good idea to switch over to this because every time you adjust anything in the viewport, it will need to re-render that preview. And we'll be rendering with both EV and Cycles in a later video, but for now, let's switch back to EV. So if I select my light and start moving this around the scene, I can see how the light interacts with the surface of the object. And I can duplicate this light as I would with any other object in the scene and then adjust the properties for this light. So we could make this one a bit more powerful and change the color. And there we go, that wraps up part five. In the next video, we're going to take a look at adding and editing materials. And if you enjoyed this one, hey, why not click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in part six.